Come with me back to a time when independent comics ruled the world. So, stick around. everybody and welcome to Days of Dorker Past. My name's Rob and in this episode we're going to talk about independent comic books that were turned into cartoons in the 1990s. And before I start, just let me say, this is going to be a multi-part series. So if you don't see the cartoon that you're thinking of, it'll be coming in the near future. With the success of DC's Superman and Batman cartoons and Marvel's X-Men and Spider-Man cartoons, everyone scrambled to try to find the next big thing in the world of comic books. A lot of studios looked towards independent comics as a cheaper alternative to try to find that next big thing. It just wasn't cartoons either. We had very obscure comics such as Men in Black, Mystery Men, and even Faust, which is very adult making the leap to the big screen or at least direct to DVD in Faust's case. With having low licensing prices with a chance at high revenue, independent comic books were very appealing to a lot of movie studios and television studios. Not only that, one of the biggest, brightest, and newest independent comic book companies was making a huge splash in the media and that was Image Comics. Founded by a group of superstar artists that broke away from Marvel at the time, Image Comics could do no wrong, except hit a deadline. <laughs> the first cartoon on the list comes from probably one of the most talented artists on the roster, and that is Jim Lee with Wildcats. Coming off from doing the art for the very popular X-Men comic, Jim Lee started Wildcat's covert action team in 1992 with Brandon Choi. It was one of the first titles released under the Image imprint and was Lee's first creator-owned project. The Wildcats were the starting point for Lee's menagerie of interconnected superhero creations which become the foundation of the Wildstorm universe. Two years later, in 1994, the Wildcats TV series was created. It only lasted 13 episodes, but it had a more family-friendly storyline than that of the comic. As a result, there were numerous changes from the source material, such as Voodoo being an adolescent rather than an ex-stripper. Other than that and some minor changes, the original group from the comic book made its way into cartoon form. The art style matched that of the X-Men cartoon, which was released two years previously, but was still running strong. It aired on CBS and later in syndication. Number two on the list is a comic book that spawned one of my favorite computer games of all time, and that is Sam and Max. First published in 1987, Steve Purcell's Sam and Max told the story of Sam, an anthropomorphic dog, gumshoe detective, and his partner Max, an anthropomorphic rabbit, both enjoyed solving problems and cases as maniacally as possible, often with complete disregard for the law. Driving a seemingly destructible black-and-white 1960 DeSoto, the pair traveled to many contemporary and historical locations to fight crime, including the Moon, Ancient Egypt, the White House, and the Philippines, as well as several fictitious locations. The series was very successful despite its relatively limited amount of media. It started to gain widespread recognition after the release of the 1993 LucasArts video game, Sam and Max Hit the Road. The comic originally ran from 1987 all the way up to 1997. But then, in 1997, the cartoon hit the airwaves of Fox Kids. The cartoon featured a more toned-down version from the comics. Gone was the violence and profanity, and it was replaced with more slapstick humor and zany hijinks. The first season ran for 13 episodes, and it won a Gemini Award in 1988 for Best Animated Series. Unfortunately, it was canceled the following April. 
Number three on the list is probably one of the more well-known 90s cartoons of all time, let alone one based on an independent comic book, and that is The Tick. Created in 1986 by 18-year-old cartoonist Ben Edlund, The Tick was a newsletter mascot for the New England Comics chain of Boston-area comic book stores. The character started out as a parody of American comic book superheroes. Starting out as a three-page story in the New England Comics newsletter, The Tick became so popular that the store financed a black-and-white comic series. The first issue was released in June of 1988. In 1994, the Fox Network introduced The Tick as a Saturday morning cartoon series, which Edlin wrote and co-produced. Lasting three seasons, the animated series would provide The Tick's greatest mainstream fame. The cartoon featured the zany and sometimes unhinged Tick and his straight-laced sidekick, Arthur, in some of the craziest adventures ever seen on Saturday morning cartoons. It may have only lasted three seasons, but it spawned two live-action series over the years and legions of dedicated fans. Number four on the list is probably one of the only times you'll see Frank Miller's name attached to a Saturday morning cartoon, and that is Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot. Released in 1995 by Dark Horse Comics, Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot was a love letter to Japanese entertainment by Frank Miller and Jeff Darrow. It featured giant robots, kaiju, and probably one of the best love letters to Astro Boy in Rusty the Boy Robot. Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot made the jump to cartoon in 1999. Appearing on Fox Kids for two seasons, Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot had 26 episodes total. Only taking some of the characters and themes from the original and more mature comic book series, Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot, the animated series, gave the characters a rich backstory and more coherent plot week to week. Number five on the list comes from the godfather of G.I. Joe himself, Larry Hama, and that is Bucky O'Hare and the Toad Wars. First created in 1977 by comic book writer Larry Hama and comic book artist Michael Golden, Bucky O'Hare did not make his first appearance to the public until 1984 in a comic called Echo of Future Past. The anthology series Echo of Future Past and the ongoing Bucky O'Hare comic were published by Continuity Comics in the mid-1980s. The series only followed one story arc and it only lasted a few issues. In 1991, Marvel and Sunbow Productions produced the animated series. It only lasted 13 episodes. The cartoon series stayed true to the comic book, but it did feature several major differences such as Deadeye having a southern accent instead of a Scottish accent, and Willie DeWitt being able to travel freely between Earth and the Antiverse instead of being stranded there. Anyway, that was just a quick look at independent comics that spawned cartoons in the 1990s. I'll be tackling this topic again in the near future with another list of some great cartoons. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them, and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here, and you enjoyed this, or any of the episodes that YouTube is recommending down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you will be notified whenever there's a new episode. So, until next time, keep being rad, and stay dorky!